Chapter 3, Adjusting the Accounts, Part 3. During this presentation, we will be talking about deferrals and specifically depreciation. So far, we have already covered in the deferrals the prepaid expenses and the supplies. During this presentation, we will be focusing on the depreciation. Let's begin with an example. Let's say that on 2019, I bought a car for $50,000. Later on, during 2020, I decided that I want to sell this car. Do you think I can sell my car in 2020 for the same price I bought it for, which means $50,000? No. Why? Because during this year, my car lost part of its value. This decrease in the value of my asset from one year to another year is what we call depreciation. Depreciation is the allocation of the cost of fixed asset over their estimated useful life. All property, plant, and equipment are depreciable assets except for land. Land are the only assets that we cannot depreciate. For us to be able to do the depreciation, we need first to identify the cost, the salvage value, and the useful life of an asset. The cost is the original price that we paid to buy the asset. The salvage value is the value of the asset after all depreciation has been fully expensed. The salvage value of an asset is determined by the company. Finally, the useful life is the amount of time the company estimates for the asset to remain in service. For us to calculate the annual depreciation expense, we have two methods. The first method is by applying this formula, which is cost minus salvage value over estimated useful life. Or we can use the rate. Annual depreciation expense is equal then to annual depreciation rate times the cost minus the salvage value. The annual depreciation rate is calculated by the following formula, which is 100 over the estimated useful life. Let's take an example. On January 1, 2015, Mada Company purchased equipment for $75,000 with estimated useful life of 10 years and no salvage value. Journalize the necessary adjusting entries at December 31, 2015, given that Mada Company prepares its financial statement yearly. First, we need to identify the cost, the salvage value, and the useful life. Our cost is $75,000, the useful life is 10 years, and the salvage value is zero. Now we need to find the depreciation expense. To find the depreciation expense, we need to apply our formula, which is depreciation expense is equal to cost minus salvage value over useful life. In this case, my depreciation expense is equal to 75,000 minus zero, which is the salvage value, over 10, which is equal to 7,500. Now I'll have to prepare my adjusting entry. I start with the date and I'll debit depreciation expense for $7,500 and credit accumulated depreciation for $7,500. What is a book value? A book value is the value of an asset according to its balance sheet account balance. So the book value is equal to cost minus accumulated depreciation. In the previous example, the book value of our asset is equal to $75,000 minus $7,500, which means that my asset is equal to $67,500. The book value of my asset is $67,500. Let's take another example. The following is a partial unadjusted trial balance for Classic Company at March 31, 2015. We have land, building, accumulated depreciation building, equipment, and accumulated depreciation equipment. Additional information. 
The estimated useful life of the building is 50 years. The equipment is depreciated at annual rate of 10% using the straight line method. We have to journalize the adjusting entries to recognize depreciation expense given that the company prepares its financial statement quarterly, which means every three months. Let's begin. First, we have land. But as we said earlier, land is not depreciated. We cannot prepare a depreciation for land. So we'll skip the land and we'll start with the building. We have cost equal to $150,000, salvage value equal to zero, and useful life equal to 50 years. Now let's apply our formula. Depreciation expense is equal to cost minus salvage value over useful life. So in this case, we have $150,000 minus zero over 50, and my depreciation is equal to $3,000 per year. However, the $3,000 is a depreciation for one whole year, which means 12 months. But as we are doing the depreciation quarterly, we need the depreciation for March 31, which means for the three months. To find the depreciation expense related to the three months only, we take the yearly depreciation, which is in this case $3,000, and we multiply it by the yearly depreciation means 12 months. So we put 12 and we put the number of months that we need to adjust, which in this case is three. So what we get is $750, which is the depreciation for the first quarter. So my adjusting entry is debit depreciation expense $750 and credit accumulated depreciation for building $750. Now let's prepare the depreciation for the equipment. The cost of the equipment is $20,000. Salvage value is zero and the depreciation rate is 10%. Since they gave me the depreciation rate, I need to use the formula with the depreciation rate. So in this case, the depreciation expense is equal to cost minus salvage value times the depreciation rate. So 20,000 minus zero times 10%, which is $2,000 yearly. Again, we have the depreciation for 12 months. And we need the depreciation until March 31, which means for three months only. To find the depreciation expense for the three months only, we need to use the yearly depreciation, which is $2,000, and multiply it with the following ratio. Our depreciation is yearly, which means for 12 months. So we need to put in the denominator 12. And since we are trying to find the depreciation for three months only, we need to put in the numerator three. And we will get the depreciation for three months, which is $500. Now we prepare our adjusting entry. We debit depreciation expense for $500 and credit accumulated depreciation for $500. Now that we finished adjusting our entries, we need to post to ledger. First, we will start with the depreciation expense. Depreciation expense is a debit account. So we will put 750 in the debit, we will get a balance of 750, which is the depreciation expense for the building. And then we will add as well the depreciation for the equipment, which is $500. And we will get a balance of 1,250. Now we prepare the accumulated depreciation for building. The accumulated depreciation for building has an opening balance. However, accumulated depreciation is a credit account. So we will start with the beginning balance, which is $12,000 that we found in the partial unadjusted trial balance. And we will add the adjustments, which is credit $750, and we will get an accumulated depreciation for the building of $12,750. We will do the accumulated depreciation for equipment as well. We have an opening balance of $8,000, and since accumulated depreciation is a credit account, 
we have $8,000 in credit and we will add the adjustment which is $500 and I will get a total accumulated depreciation for $8,500. Now that I've finished posting to Ledger, I need to prepare a partial balance sheet. I start by putting the name of the company, which is Classic Company, the type of financial statement I'm preparing, which in this case is a partial balance sheet, and the date, which is March 31, 2015. Since it's a partial balance sheet for PPE, I'll start by putting the title of PPE, Property, Plant and Equipment. First, I have the land, which is $60,000. Then the building, which is $150,000. And I'll have to deduct the accumulated depreciation for building, and I'll get the value from the ledger, which is 12750 So the book value of the building is equal to $137,250. Now the equipment. We will deduct the accumulated depreciation of the equipment, which is equal to 8500 and I'll get the book value of $11,500. What I need to do now is to find the total property, plant, and equipment. And I'll do so by adding the $60,000 to $137,250 to the $11,500, and I'll get $208,750.